All right, so in this video, we're going to be continuing on with binary trees, and we're gonna be taking a look at how to traverse the tree in a level order fashion. So if this is our binary tree here, the level order printout, or the way in which we can traverse this tree in a level order fashion, starts off here at the root node, and then considers the next level down. So we print out the nodes at the second level, which would be two and three. And that's that exhausts all the nodes on this second level here. So then we progress down to the third level. And we print out all of the nodes here on the third level, which there are just two of them, four and five. So a level order traversal of this tree starts off here in the first level, only, only node there. Then it moves down to this next level, two and three. And then the final level, uh, we have the elements four and five. So this would be the output of a level order traversal of this particular binary tree. So we're gonna go over how we're going to actually accomplish this task, and then we're going to code up an implementation of this algorithm for level order traversal in Python. So the general way in which to perform a level order traversal is going to involve the use of a queue data structure, and we're going to use it in the following way. So I'm gonna step through an example of how we make use of a queue, and the general pattern will hopefully become clear based on this particular example. So the way we start off is we have a queue data structure, and we set the initial element of that queue, we in queue the first element of the level order tra traversal, which in this case will be the first node, which will be the root. So we start off with just in queuing the root node into our queue, and then what we do after we have this is we have a while loop that will go over this queue and will keep going until this particular queue is empty. So what we'll do in this loop is we'll check what the first element of the queue is. So we'll perform a peak operation. This will let us figure out who is first in line in this queue. So if we do that, we peak, we see that we, of course, we just enqueued the root, which is one. And so we print out that as our first element for the level order traversal. So then what we do is we move along and then we ask, give me the left and right children of the node that you just pulled out. So we just pulled out this node here, we dequeued it from the queue, and then we're going to ask what are the left and right children of this node that we just dequeued from the queue. So one is no longer there, we're checking what are the left and right children, so we have two and three as these nodes that are the left and right children of this node that we just dequeued. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to enqueue them one by one, left and then right, into the queue. So we have two going first in the line and then right, uh, right node is going to follow right behind it in the queue. So then what we do is we follow the procedure that we did before. We peek, what is the first element in the queue? Who's first in line? So we see that two is first in line. So we get that as our second element as the output of the level order traversal. And then what we do is we take that node out. We actually take the node that we just peeked at. We look at that and we ask, okay, who what children does this node particularly have? Who are the left and right children of this node that we just we just peeked at and we just dequeued? So that node is no longer in the queue, we've dequeued it. And then we find that the left and right children of this node here with two are four and five. So what we do there is we say, okay, let's enqueue both four and five. Again, four is gonna go before five since left, we check left first and then right. So now we have a queue that looks like this with three still up at the front and then the four and five, the ones we just enqueued in the previous step here. And what we're gonna do now is follow a similar pattern. We're going to peek at the first element of the queue and we're going to dequeue that element. And then we're going to ask, what are the left and right children of this element that we just dequeued? So we can go over here to this tree and we see that there's no left, there's no right. So we say, okay, well, there's no left or right children so we don't have to add anything to the queue. We'll go ahead and take another peek. If we take a peek, we print out the four here, and we're going to go ahead and DQ four. So we DQ four, and then we ask, what are the left and right children of this particular node? So we look at four, we say, okay, there's no left, there's no right. So we don't add anything to the queue, we don't add anything to the back here, so we just say, okay, print out five, because we give this a peek, and we move right along. So we DQ the node that we just peeked at, which is five. We ask, is there any left or right children of five? There's not. So that's pretty much all we need to do. So there's no left or right children of this node. We've already printed out the level, level order traversal. And we check to make sure, that, again, the loop that we have here is making sure that we loop until the queue is empty. So at this point, there's no further elements to process in the queue. So we are done, and that is 
all we need for the level order traversal. So now that we understand basically how this level order traversal works, let's go ahead and go into our programming environment and code this up. So here I am in Python, and this is just following up on the previous video that we did on binary trees. If you didn't see that, that uh, code can be obtained from my GitHub, and you can refer to the link in the description below to this video or to the previous video if you want the, the code that I'm starting with here. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a function that allows us to perform a level order traversal. And again, what we did with the slides in the example that we went over, we made use of a queue data structure. So we're going to code up a very quick queue class, which is going to allow us to manipulate the items that we pull off of the tree in, uh, as we did in the slides. So we're going to go up here and above the node class, let's go ahead and create a queue class, which will uh, be useful for us in this problem. So we'll say class queue object. And then in the constructor of this queue, basically what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of modify the Python's list data structure that comes implicitly with Python. And we're going to modify that to, uh, I guess, adapt it to be to perform like a queue would. So just like we did for the stack, if you saw these series of stack videos, we did the same thing where we defined a class, defined a stack, and we essentially modified the list uh, property in Python, the list data structure that's implicit in Python language to behave as a stack would. So we're going to do the same thing here as a queue. So for the constructor, what we're going to do is we're going to have self.items is equal to an empty list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write a few functions here. So let's first define the in queue function. So this is for adding things to the queue. So we're going to want in this parameter list self and also the thing that we want to add, which we'll refer to as item. And we'll say self.items.insert because we want to insert this into the uh, zeroth element of the queue. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to insert this element in a very specific location into the queue that we're defining. And then we also want a dequeue operation, which will remove the thing from the front of the line. So we'll say dequeue self. Don't have to give it any more arguments. And we'll say if not self dot is empty, which we'll go ahead and define this is empty function shortly. So as long as the queue is not empty, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and return self dot items dot pop. So we'll pop out the the item of the queue, and then we'll return that so we can see what that uh, in this case that node looks like. So we've got our in queue and d queue functions. Let's go ahead and define that is empty function that we just used. So we'll say is empty. It'll take self. And then basically we'll just return the length of self to items equals zero. If this is true, this will return true. This will return it is empty. Otherwise, it will return false. Let's do a few more. So we need the peak function as well. So we'll define a peak operation. And basically we'll also check as long as this is not empty, what we'll do is we will return self.items. Uh, minus one, and then we'll do that value. So this will, we're going to assume that we're storing nodes in this queue. So we can use this dot value, uh, this, this dot value terminology here. So we can actually access the value of the node that is stored at that location in the queue. So that's why I'm adding this dot value there. A few more here. I, want, I just want to add a few more helper functions. So we'll also override the length operator in this class. So anytime we say length of Q, we can just say, if we define a Q object, we can just say length of whatever Q object we define, and that will be overridden for whatever we say in this function here. So we'll go ahead and define this length function for Q to just be something that will allow us to return self.size. And what is size? Well, that's something we need to define as well. So size of the Q will just be the size of the items, the number of items in the queue. So we'll return length of self.items. And let's see, I think we pretty much have everything that we need here for the time being. If we need anything more, we can go back up and add that into this class. So we've got our queue class. This actually might be um, too much. We might not actually make use of these functions here. So we'll just leave them in for now because they're useful possibly in the future. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make use of this queue class that we just defined, and we're going to perform a level order traversal, and we're going to define that function within the binary tree class that you should have from the previous video on binary trees. So let's go ahead and create 
Let's go ahead and create the function there. So what we'll do is we'll say def level order print. So we'll follow a similar pattern to these post order, in order, and pre order functions that uh, essentially call the print tree helper function. So we'll say level order print. And then what we'll do here is we'll pass in self and then start. This is kind of where we're going to start printing from the level order. So most likely it will just be the root. But if we want to specify another node to start from instead of the root, we can do that by, uh, by having this argument here. So what we're going to do is we're going to check, first of all, whether or not the node that we're given is null. So if start is null, if it's none, then there's not much we can do. So we're just going to go ahead and return. So otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to define our queue object. So we'll say queue is equal to queue. So we're defining an object of the queue class that we just defined. And then again, what we did is we enqueued the start of the uh, of the tree. In, in the case that we went over in the slides, we added the root element as the first element in the queue. So we're going to say, we're just going to start off right with that. We're going to say queue.enqueue start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have, let's say, a traversal string, which will perform just as it did for these other post order, in order, and pre order functions, where traversal is just going to be a nice string that will show us the content of the node, and then a little dash, and then the content of the next node, just so we can see very concisely what the traversal looks like. So that's what this traversal string is going to be composed of. And then we're going to say, while the length of the queue is greater than zero. So we're using here that length function that we over overrode. So recall up here in this um, Q class that we just defined, we overrode this length function so we can perform length on an object of type Q that we just defined because we defined how this length function should operate on a type uh, object that is of type Q. So while the size of the Q is strictly greater than zero, we're going to say traversal plus equal, and then what we'll do here is we'll actually uh, peek at the queue, and then we'll add that element to the traversal string. So we'll say string of queue.peak, and then we'll add a nice little dash here, so that way it, it looks, it formats a little bit nicely. So we have our string, and then what we do, remember, after we peek is we take that node out of the front of the queue, and then we ask, what are the children of this node if they have any at all? So let's go ahead and take that node out of the queue. So we'll say node is equal to queue.dq. So we're taking that right out of the queue. And then we're going to, remember, check, we're going to ask, what are the left and right children of this node? So we're going to say if node.left, and then we'll do something, and then if node.right. So we want to make sure that we're, if the nodes do actually exist, then we want to do something to those nodes. So what do we want to do to those nodes? We want to enqueue them into the queue. So if the left node does exist, we'll say queue.enqueue, and then we'll say the node.left, and then we'll have a very similar thing right here for the right node. If there is a right node, then we'll do the same thing, only we'll replace left with right. And then all we need to do at the end there is we'll go ahead and we'll return traversal, which will be the string of the level order traversal. So another thing that we can do is we're going to go up here to this print tree function that we've kind of specified as our print helper. So we've specified the traversal type. So we've done pre-order, in order, and post order. I'm going to add another traversal type. So else if traversal type is equal to level order, then we'll perform a level order traversal. So we'll say return self dot in order, uh, not in order, sorry, level order print, and then we'll feed it the root, and then we don't have to feed it any string here. So these functions had the second parameter of a string, again, because these were called recursively, and every recursive call would feed in a string that was longer and longer and longer based on the elements that we would extract from that tree. In this case, as you notice, the level order traversal is done in an iterative fashion, and there's no need to pass in the traversal as an argument for this, uh, for this traversal type. So that's pretty much all we need there. Let's go down here. What I have here is the same tree that we have from the slides. So the root is one, left of that is two, right of that root is three, and then the left and right of the node three are four and five. So just like we had in the figure in the slides right there, it's the same exact tree. So we should see an output of one, two, three, four, five if we do a level order traversal. Let's go ahead and verify that. We'll say print tree dot level order traversal. 
or level order prints and then we'll just call it like that or actually we're not going to call it like that are we because we just defined the print tree helper and we're going to specify here that we want to do a level order traversal so we're going to say level order so we're going to print the result of that out so I'm going to go ahead and save that and clear the terminal and then run it so python level order traversal dot pi and if we do that we see the output of the level order traversal is one two three four five so it looks like our level order traversal is performing as expected so that pretty much does it for this video if you have any questions comments or anything of the sort do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below as always the code for this will be on my github and the link for that will be in the description below feel free to download and play with this yourself uh, thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye